Hi, I'm Craig from the Oakshot Institute. Today we wanted to introduce you to Woods. Woods is an amazing steel. It has certain properties visually when it's refined and worked correctly that really make it a iconic element in the history of arms and armor. Uh, what we got here today are two examples of different types of processes for creating steel from ore. We take that ore itself and we crush it up usually, make it smaller, not big chunks. You want it down to about acorn size in most cases. And then you produce a furnace that has that, uh, the fuel, charcoal in most cases, and you bake that and run that furnace with an oxygenated atmosphere, and that creates a bloom. And here we have a bloom that is produced in the Japanese style. Top mahogany is what it would be called. And you can see it looks like a fairly you know, hefty stone, but it has a lot of pockets in it, or almost looks like a spongy mass. Uh, if you bisect it, you will see it actually does have quite a bit of metal in there and it is refined down pretty well, but this still needs then to be worked by the hammer, uh, breaking this up and then you put those pieces together and hammer them down. Woods, on the other hand, is where you would take sometimes iron or iron ore and place it into a crucible. It would be a uh, container such as this which can handle very high heats. Uh, place those materials in here with some carburizing elements, such as some organic material, in with the iron or ore uh, in certain circumstances. It would then be topped with a lid of the same material, sealed with clay, and baked at a high temperature for long periods of time. The resulting res uh, product from that material would be a cake of woods. And you can see that it, when you opened it up, you would see this surface of the cake, and it would create a solid amalgamated piece of metal that has a high, car high carbon content. Uh, it is created with a crystalline structure of dendrites, and a lot of the alloying or impurities would uh, kind of collect between those dendrites. And that's what gives it its visual or watered surface when finished. The result is that this has to be worked at certain temperatures and can't be worked too long to create a piece. That's one of the reasons that they created smaller elements of wood steel to create a uh, finished product and having very large pieces of it because it would take too much work to get those large pieces worked down into the smaller pieces. The result is that you have those dendrites being kind of broken up and mixed as it is forged down but not disappear in a sense. They are amalgamated into the product, it's forged into the shape it would like to uh, create the product, whether it's a knife blade or a piece of armor or what have you. And then with polishing you would see what they call that watered steel finish. It's a shimmery, you see elements of different uh, colors or uh, tones of color in a sense, they're all going to be kind of gray and uh, black and bright uh, metallic images, but those things, especially like in bright sunlight, would almost have an iridescent quality to it. You'd see like peacocky type oil colors floating on water. Uh, it's, a, it's a very handsome effect on the piece, and it was uh, highly prized by those that were producing these weapons. Both of these pieces are highly intensely high carbon steel. You can see that if you take a magnet, it will pick either one up. So you have a quality of material that is uh, quite consistent and good. It's just that they now have to go through different processing uh, attempts to create a piece that is uh, a workable blade or a tool. So this would need to be worked at uh, high temperatures, but not too long. This would have to have a lot of forging to uh, collapse all of these cavities and drive impurities out, uh, sometimes stretching those out. There's going to be silicates in both of these and things like that. So that's sometimes where you see runners or strings or a, looks like a scratch in a finished piece. And that's a piece of silicate that's been drawn out by the forging process into a long string. 
Uh, so you can see that both of them were relatively efficient processes to create slightly different products and those products then would be worked by the Smith to create the weapons and the pieces that they were so interested in creating. Thanks for coming to the Oakshot Institute for more information. Let us know if you have any questions. Have a great day.